Hello again, this is Don Brill. We've been asked to see if our impact hauler would process Kernza, which is a perennial wheat. Here's how it comes when it's delivered. And we were successful. The lower portion are the seeds, the grains rather, after being done. And the upper is the seeds as delivered. This over here are what the husks look like. So you can see it, it's difficult to tell when one has been done if the seed is still in there but through uh, just aspirating them we were able to separate it. I mean let you just read what we've got here. So it was developed by the Land Institute. Sprout Labs submitted these and Sprout Labs are telling me that they are going to attempt to create a kit based on uh, this impact hauler. Today we're going to do the equivalent of 30 pounds per hour. I have a quarter pound of it, so we'll try to do that. We're using a half horsepower motor, 3,450 RPM. There are other videos that show the uh, workings of the hauler and how it was built. Today we've added a winnowing system. One thing on here, I'd really like somebody to design a method of getting those RPMs up using a bicycle. So here's what we did to figure out the RPM. At 1000 RPM, we only had 5%. At 1750 RPM, 30%. 3075 percent 3485 percent with some breakage. But we're believing this minimal breakage is worth it. So as a reminder, here's our setup. This is a uh, half horsepower motor. I'll try to see if I can show you that. Half horsepower motor running at 3450 RPM. We have a um, shaft. We're using a hose to clamp the shaft coming from the motor to our drive shaft that's uh, driving our impeller. This is our funnel. We're going to drop the uh, grain into there. This is the uh, face of the impeller. Other videos show that. What we've changed is coming out now we have this box and right straight down here, there's a uh, neoprene 60 durometer piece that's acting as an impact surface. So the rice is coming out the bottom, down here, shooting into here, hits this neoprene, drops down into this PVC pipe. And we had to figure out a way to keep the uh, the hauled grains from going up and into our system. So this right here, excuse me, this right here is actually some of this neoprene that uh, I put in here and acts as a buffle, uh, baffle and the grains are going to hit this again, slow them down, and then they're going to go through this tube. And this tube's about four feet long over to here. Uh, down here is a jar that's screwed into this surface here. It's pretty easy to do. So you see I have this. Let me unscrew this for you. So this is just a three inch reducer to a two inch then I just take the uh, lid to this jar, obviously cut a hole in it, and this will be my collection basket. I use this so that I can see down inside, 
and then I went uh, four inch so this is two inch tubing back here up through here I had to go all the way up to four inch and then back down so uh, if you're going to do this you might want to just start with four inch the entire way instead of three to four it's because there's just too much air blowing so we're going to process the grain plus winnow it all in one step so now let's get started okay so we're going to go ahead now and do a quarter pound and uh, the main thing is we want to make sure that no grain can come up and out our uh, tubing there. We're going to try to do a quarter of a pound in 15 did uh, that quarter pound ended up being about 20 seconds so we'll sort out uh, that's three times that so now uh, let me see what we have over here so now <clears throat> I'm going to try to separate this the this is some um, metal with uh, 1 16th inch holes in it and um, it works okay it's not the best but it's all I have and I'd prefer to separate as much as possible so I don't have to run the uh, grain through as many times let me turn it on so the uh, grains are going to fall through these holes and it's going to migrate down. The unhole will be too large, or hopefully too large, and most of them won't. So there it is, they're bouncing. And I can have three points where I can adjust these things on the sides here are uh, elastic, like a bungee cord. So I'll run this through a couple of times. As you can see, these are collecting the uh, unhold rice. Probably a little dip right here, that's why it's collecting there. Alright, I'm going to do this again. This is the uh, motor we're using to vibrate the separator. It's a Dayton. All right, here's the second pass. Going down a little bit faster than the bike. Slow it down. So I just let it run both sides are the same. I'm only using this one half. So if someone has a lot of uh, grain to do, you'd have a bunch of screens. Uh, it might be possible to use aspiration to separate it. Right now, this is what I use for the rice, so I just continued that method. 
So this, these grains are going into the uh, container that I'll have to run again. This um, pile on the left went through the separator and uh, it's almost 99% the uh, grains. And then this pile over here, this still has a lot of uh, unhold in it. So these are so small, I'll, I, I would bet we're up at that 85 to 90% on the first pass. Now I'm going to run this one, the right hand side, what you're looking at, through the uh, system again. So we now just finished the Kernza perennial wheat. We started with four ounces. We did it in 20 seconds for that first pass. We had, uh, which makes it 12 ounces per minute. 45 pounds an hour. We started with four ounces and we ended up with two ounces. So your end product would be 23 pounds an hour. We showed you how we haul it, how we winnow it, and how we separate it. Now we're hoping that the gentlemen from Sprout Labs in um, Minnesota are going to create a kit that people will be able to buy and they'll be able to process both this wheat and rice. Good luck on your projects.